You know what it's like on those wintry occasions when England's in the grip of snow? A Pathepic camera crew is out battling with the elements, and they're thinking of that magic carpet we use so often to whisk you away as you sit in your cinema seats from Cleopatra's needle to just such another obelisk standing in Egypt's sun where the origins of our culture were carved out. The sun god's temple at Luxor, built by a million men as generation after generation of haughty pharaohs staked out their claim to immortality. See how the most arrogant of them, the great Ramesses, rated Nefertari, his beloved queen, with his enormous self. It's 3,000 years since battle scene memories were cut into this stone, long ages since war chariots and processions of prisoners mustered in this great hall. Yet today, it's easy to repeople Thebes, the imperial city that stood here with courtiers, priests, guards and concubines, all who knelt before the pharaoh, the omnipotent pharaoh whose presence was everywhere. Thebes, with its temples, markets, workshops, harbours, palaces, was as big as Birmingham, the true wonder of the ancient world that they're still digging out of the rubble and dust of time. The rubble and dust that luckily blew over these massive memorials when the old culture waned and crumbled forgotten like the answer to the riddle of the Sphinx. Thank whatever god you serve for the rubble and dust of centuries that hid these treasures of antiquity from vandals and thieves. Early Christians defaced every statue they came across for its blasphemy. Ghouls trod pottery inscriptions under heel as they looted the tombs. Those dust drift coverings alone have left Egypt so rich in the relics of our early yesterdays that scholars can still join visitors in learning staggering facts here at Karnak, the most colossal temple ever built in the history of the human race. Your dragoman can feed you the facts that will rekindle the scenes here when a conquering pharaoh came home from Asia with booty, wine, women, gold and high-ranking prisoners to be paraded here in their ignominy to the glory of the sun god, all so close to their own burial ground across the river, the Valley of Kings. When there were a million people living in this ancient hundred-gated city, nobles in palaces, craftsmen and labourers in huts of mud, this was the hyperstyle hall of wonders that all of them knew. Craftsmen with jewelled bronze instruments cut and garnished its 134 columns. The grand viziers, the priests, the charioteers and courtiers gathered with their sons and their smart, modern-looking daughters. Their wives, who had great status and surprising freedom, paraded here when their lord, the pharaoh, held court and caused his campaign successes to be recorded in hieroglyphics. That sacred boat took the pharaoh from this temple to Luxor every new year with regatta crowds on the river or gazing up at the colour that still lives in this gigantic place. Those columns, with the carvings and the frescoes all round them, have surrendered the secret of the hieroglyphics. The experts can read the pharaoh's boasts and the history and the poetry written here, but nobody can comprehend the terrible, God-fearing fervour that drove these ancient people. No one can begin to see a glimmer of meaning in a religion where snakes and cats and crocodiles are worshipped, where the virgin goddess Sashmet, with the head of a lion and the body of a human, strikes fear into the human heart, but for guidance leaves a blank. It's the same riddle that you can juggle with in Egypt's western desert, that eternal unsolved riddle posed by the Sphinx 
Why? For what reason? Perhaps these Bedouin horsemen knew the answer, and incredibly, they're alive today. Why, for what reason do these Bedouins perform the elaborate ritual of this horse dance, with the pyramids of Giza as their background scenery, it all seems simple, primitive, inevitable, and though the reason escapes you, it all seems unutterably right. We've traveled far from Cleopatra's Needle and London's winter, and we've learned a lot on our journey. We're learning now not to demand the answers. In Egypt, with its sun-drenched memories, time becomes so meaningless that we can sleep, relax. For this is a timeless country where the Nile flows on as it flowed in the Pharaoh's days. The sun is still a power in the land. How, what, why, for what reason? The questions keep cropping up and the questionings are joy and important. Relax, the answers themselves don't matter anymore.